Hi, I'm Lisa Singer, the event editorial manager at Media Post, and you're watching right now Insider Summit BTS, and it's where we get to uh, sort of pull back the curtain on some of the most influential women marketers today. And with me right now is Chloe Shanoday. She is the CMO of Adore Me. It's a women's lingerie and apparel brand. So hello. Welcome, Chloe. Hi, thanks for having me. No, I'm so glad. I mean, we've definitely, we've included you guys at the summit, but I never had the opportunity to meet you. So I'm really happy that we're able to do this. And uh, just because, I mean, obviously you guys have been so great to include um, at our events just because, well, you're really, you're, I mean, you're always, and when someone says adore me, it's about disruptors, you know, and even your CEO, he basically described you or said something about disrupting the lingerie industry to its core. And I want to ask you what your definition of disruptor is, and not just in mm -hmm. terms of how you are at Adore Me, but just what is, an, what is a disruptor to you? Mm -hmm. um, I think the, the kind of easy definition would be that it's a company that causes a radical change um, in an industry, usually through innovation. Um, so for example, for Adore Me, it was creating intimates for women of all shape, size, budget, style. And at the time when we started in 2012, 2013, you actually had two alternatives to, um, you know, to buy underwear, to buy lingerie. Um, and if you had a certain size, you would go to one alternative or the other, but you wouldn't find, you know, a lot of different variety of styles. It would be pretty pricey. So at the time that was really, you know, um, a real disruption in the market. Um, but I think to me, disruptor, it goes beyond the value proposition. Um, it's also, you know, it has to be everywhere in a company. I think it's like the way the company leverages technology, um, the way you lead your team, the way, um, you know, you, you set up your company culture. Um, I think it's really, you know, being a disruptor means really across the board trying to, you know, start things from scratch and, um, and, and really innovate on yeah, all the different aspects of, of your, uh, your business. It sounds like in a sense, you seem to be a disruptor as well in terms of at least when I look at even your career path and, um, you know, before this, you were with an e-commerce retail, which was very much of a mood by me, but it was very mm -hmm. much about women choosing how they, what clothes they want. And it was something, again, it was very new to mm -hmm. what you offered out there and adore me. And just, just looking at your background, talk about that. What draws you to the positions you take or the companies you work for? Mm -hmm. So, um, so just to give some background, I, I actually graduated in uh, political sciences um, in France with a, a minor in Latin American studies. So completely different from, from what I've been doing um, since graduation. Um, and initially I wanted to start a career in, um, in politics. And then I spoke to a few um, you know, people working in international organizations, and I understood that it was very slow, not very meritocratic, and very, you know, political. So I decided to, you know, change my career goal, and um, I wanted to work in the media, but I really wanted to do to report on international news. Um, and um, I realized that, you know, to do that, you probably have to start by, you know, with local news for like a few years. And it was also too slow for me. So um, after graduation, I actually sent my resume everywhere in the world and I got um, an internship in China. Uh, and at the end of the internship, I really wanted to stay um, to stay there. And I met with a, an entrepreneur, female entrepreneur. Um, who had been, she, she's French, but she had been for, I think, 17 years in China. And she was just starting this new business of um, selling um, made to order, um, so bespoke fashion. Um, so made in, you know, factories close to, to where the headquarter was in Shanghai and um, shipping them to France uh, for the French market. And it was a really fun experience. I got to do a lot of, um, you know, I actually designed the first website in Photoshop. I went to visit factories in the south of China. It was really a fun, fun experience. And I think um, it was very opportunistic. Um, and I really discovered that I love this kind of startup mentality, st startup mindset. 
Um, and I really like the idea of, you know, not um, following, you know, a to-do list, but really kind of like solving problems. Um, and I think that's also why, you know, I, I joined Adormi. Um, I think at the time it was like a very bold, um, you know, sentence to say, oh, we are going to go after Victoria's Secret. And we were like 10 people in this tiny room in the, <laughs> in the garment district in New York. So, um, but we, we really believed in it. And, uh, and there was that, you know, really this, this great company culture that is still there of, of being super collaborative and working together. So, you know, I think ultimately I, I chose, I, I mean, I have only, I worked only in two companies. Um, so besides my internship, so um, I would say it was a lot, you know, opportunistically uh, these choices were made, but ultimately I think what, you know, kept me in the companies is more like the, you know, the company culture and, and this mindset, this entrepreneurial startup mindset. Well, and even, I mean, just looking at your background in terms of starting out, well, where are you from originally? France. You are, but what, mm -hmm. um, what area or just Paris or outside? So, no, um, more like countryside. So in the Champagne region. Okay, so. yeah. So, but, so you start off, you know, in Champagne, <laughs> of the Champagne region of mm -hmm. France. And then you go to, you said Hong Kong? Uh, Shanghai. Shanghai, yeah. I'm messing up everywhere. But, <laughs> but still you go to another country and now here mm -hmm. you are in the States. And it seems like, you know, again, you started maybe wanting to be a journalist or, you mm -hmm. know, first politics, then journalists. So you still sort of change very easily, at least in yourself, you know, like for mm -hmm. your mind, whatever doesn't feel right, you seem to move mm -hmm. on to the next thing and try it out, which mm -hmm. to me is sort of a disruptor. So in a sense, I mm -hmm. really feel like you are kind of that person, like you, you mm -hmm. seem to be very fearless in terms of your choices and how you, mm -hmm. are, where you go to next. Mm -hmm. um, does anything sort of hold you back? Like, was there anything you maybe as you're making those choices, moving to different countries, mm -hmm. was there any fear involved or how were you, were they just, let's do it? I think, yeah, I've always been, you know, part risk taker, part, you know, a bit impulsive in my personal, yeah, I think career choice. So actually never felt it was crazy until, you know, years later and I look back and I'm like, oh my God, you know, I actually, I did a study abroad year in Brazil when I was 19 years old and my mom was terrified and I was like, oh, it's fine, you know, like no big deal. And then when I look back, I'm like, oh my God, I was like pretty bold. So um, yeah, I think it's just, you know, I, I like to, you know, adapt and, and see, you know, face new challenges. So um, yeah, never felt to me as a risk when I was taking it. Um, I think now with, uh, I have two young kids, so I don't think I would, you know, I don't think my career path would evolve the same way as it started. Um, but otherwise, um, yeah, I guess just personality traits. Well, and you talk about how your mom was nervous when you took your, um, when I studied abroad, mm -hmm. but now you have two young children, mm -hmm. one boy, girl, uh, both. So I have a three and a half girl and um, one year old uh, boy. So. Oh, perfect. Mm -hmm. Well now, okay, cut to, you know, 15 years later, they're mm -hmm. coming to you and saying, hey, we want to go to, you know, Alaska, Australia, I don't know, mm -hmm. wherever, just like, just way, leave mm -hmm. you and try somewhere different. Um, mm -hmm. Do you feel like you're going to sort of be like your mom or will you remember what you went through and sort of pass that mm -hmm. along? I think so. I think it's a matter of like trust. So I think if I, you know, if I feel, you know, I trust them and, um, and they're responsible, you know, why not? <laughs> well, you know, you better save this recording and then your kids can play it back yeah, you know. <laughs> you know, 15 years from now. <laughs> <laughs> so, well, I want to ask you, and it seems like you probably do see a lot of silver linings. I mean, you mm -hmm. definitely seem very positive. And is there a time when maybe one of those moves that you made, took, one of those risks, whether you realized it was a mm -hmm. risk or not, didn't work out? And it seemed like it was a really mm -hmm. horrible situation, but it actually turned out to be pretty good. Um, I think not, um, not really. I think there's, you know, I think when you work in e-commerce, things change all the time you know you have like new competitors you have changes in technology that really affect the way you do things so 
I think it's, um, and I think that's something that I really appreciate in working in marketing, the digital marketing is that um, it's like, you know, this constant cycle of challenge and, you know, brainstorm and innovation. So every, you know, they've been like, we've had like tough moments at Adormi, for example, um, but I think it, it was always a good occasion to, you know, go back to the drawing board, um, you know, kind of like going back to that mindset of being collaborative, like being in a room and like work together and like really think about, okay, how can we, you know, not stay in that situation, but really think of like what's next. So um, yeah, I think any type of change is always coming with, I always see it in a positive way because I, I think that's it's really an occasion to like change things around and, and improve things. Yeah, sort of reassess. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, in Adore Me also, you guys have always been very inclusive as even when you talked about at the top, mm -hmm. how you wanted to offer different sizes to so many people. And mm -hmm. I think you guys offer like 70 different sizes or something like that, yeah. and, um, mm -hmm. which is amazing. So you've always wanted everyone to be able to shop at Adore Me. And mm -hmm. I know that carries over also just from what I've seen um, written about your company, written about Adore Me is that you want to see in more inclusiveness for everything. And right mm -hmm. now we definitely, I think, see really consumers expecting that from, mm -hmm. you know, brands, expecting it more, especially with this past year and what mm -hmm. it's brought. Do you feel like, I mean, I know that's, it, it sounds like that's part of who you are, but do you still feel like that is an obligation as a brand, as uh, a marketer in your position to bring that inclusivity to the rest of the world? Yeah, I think, you know, for, for us, it was, you know, it was an obvious choice to offer all the sizes. We, um, yeah, for us, we, we, we started and we were like, okay, you know, we are here to, um, you know, create an experience that, you know, any women can, um, can really, um, uh, you know, where, where every woman can shop. So, I think it was it was an obvious choice, and uh, I've actually noticed recently there was um, there was a subway campaign right now in New York, and um, you know I won't say the brand, but I think the tagline is the fashion revolution, and that brand just started to include plus size in their assortment, and I was a bit shocked because I was like, you know, this is not a fashion re revolution. Like so many brands have started that you know years ago, so um, yeah, I do think that you know inclusivity shouldn't be a debate. It's you know it's a must-have uh, right now, especially when you're when you're in fashion. Well, I also, I mean, you guys also a lot of your what you do is you want it to be sustainable. You want it to mm -hmm. be something that also you, you need to take care of the environment, mm -hmm. and it tends to be that usually goes to a higher cost item. Like when mm -hmm. people want to do good, it seems like mm -hmm. you have to spend more money. You know, it's just when you mm -hmm. look at products like that, but you don't want to do that. How are you able to sort of wrap you, your head around that in the sense that sometimes mm -hmm. it can be a little bit more costly to do mm -hmm. that, but you don't want to then bring it to your customers? Mm -hmm. I think it's, um, I mean, it's obviously a huge element. It's easy to, to, you know, offer sustainable fashion, but um, but at a really high cost. I think if you want to make it affordable and inclusive, so, you know, our point of view as a, as a company is that you as a customer should be able to buy, you know, your affordable um, lingerie, you know, even like sexy lingerie um, that is made with like recycled fibers or organic fibers, and you shouldn't have to pay double the price because if, you know, that's, if you start offering sustainable products, but only to like a niche market because of the price, um, this is not inclusivity and, and it doesn't make sense for us. So it's been a lot of work, honestly, across the company, you know, working with our manufacturers, working with the supply chain on the packaging, on transportation, um, making sure that, um, you know, our inventory is accurate and, uh, and we don't have too many, too much leftover. So it's, um, I think, you know, you can do it. It's just like very complex. Um, so we really hope that, you know, we can be an example and, uh, and kind of inspire other, other companies to, um, to also um, offer affordable, inclusive fashion.
Well, and as CMO, I mean, you know, that's a, you have a lot of power within your company, mm -hmm. obviously, and you have a voice and that's something that you need to share. But is it also something you have to build from within? Like, do you have to bring in the right people at all levels, whether, you know, from your CEO, mm -hmm. which you don't bring him in, but, <laughs> but I'm saying, and then the people you hire, like, is that something mm -hmm. that as you build the company, you have to keep in the back of your mind when you're interviewing different people or bringing different people into your work? Yeah, I mean, I think usually, you know, candidates do their research. So they, they often kind of, you know, self-select, you know, by the time they come to the interview. So actually had, um, I think almost every interview I've had this year, the candidates, candidates have told me, oh, I, you know, I'm here um, because I really appreciate your brand. I think you're doing a great job in terms of, you know, showcasing different women. Um, I love your product, or I'm really inspired by the sustainability, um, you know, journey that you started as a company. So, um, so I think that's that's the good thing is that, uh, you know, I think people who who want to join, they already, you know, they're already in the same mindset and they're already sold with this this idea. Yeah, you all sort of like when you say when you turn to adore me and you found that the culture is exactly what you mm -hmm. feel comfortable with what you like to be and that's mm -hmm. why you've been there as long as you have. Mm -hmm. So, well, I want to do a little get a little bit more fun um, mm -hmm. with you guys had a campaign which um, it was what do women really want for mm -hmm. Valentine's Day? Mm -hmm. And we definitely had some interesting answers. <laughs> so, mm -hmm. I'm going to ask you, what do you really want for Valentine's Day? <laughs> Um, I think my answer will not be as fun as the one uh, <laughs> we had in that video. So for context, these were these were real answers that we found on Reddit. Um, and there's a Reddit thread that says that asks this question, what, what do we men want for Valentine's Day? And they're like hilarious answers. Um, and I don't know, I think I'm not going to have such a fun answer because <laughs> I have two <laughs> kids and I think the only thing I want is like, you know, have time to sleep and, you know, be able to have like, just like one day with my husband without my kids. <laughs> so. yeah, and then a babysitter. That's what you need, right? You need someone to uh, watch yeah. so you guys can go out. <laughs> mm -mm. They're still a bit small. So I was, I'm a, I'm a bit like reluctant, but soon, soon. Yeah. No. Okay. Just curious. Cause it was when I, when I, saw the commercial of when you were running all of that mm -hmm. it was like some of the answers you wouldn't have ever have thought would have come out mm -hmm. <laughs> so it's definitely a good one to do um now obviously um at we, you know your cmo and so you were able to we talked about all the different risks you took and all the different you know changing mm -hmm. from one to the next but now as cmo you don't necessarily have that luxury or do you is there a time do you still follow that gut do you still be able, are you still able to sort of say, let's do this and you don't necessarily have to, you know, hem and haw over it a lot? Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I think, I mean, being in a company that has this mindset of, you know, this disruptor mindset, I think it's actually, you know, appreciated and it's really easy to come up with like some crazy ideas and, um, and you know, convince people into them and, you know, explaining that no no it's not you know I'm not like <laughs> I'm not crazy I actually think it's like a really good move so we um and I think what's interesting is not just me as the CMO but everyone in our company um we have this sort of weird flat organization where everyone really has the power to suggest um you know a new idea and you know if um you know if you want to put time into it you can get access to like you know a team and some resources or a budget. So um, I think it's it's always been in our culture to encourage these kind of like crazy gut feeling, uh, bold ideas because that's really how you you know you foster creativity and you you manage to really get like you know the idea that will make the difference versus you know your competitors. Yeah, no, and it makes sense that everyone. I think that well, especially with a company like yours, you're an organization like yours. But I think that that especially now where everyone is trying to be more um, inclusive of all mm -hmm. people of you know ages colors mm -hmm. religions whatever and to bring in all those different people you want to hear all those people you don't just need mm -hmm. to fill the you know you know mm -hmm. check off I got this and that mm -hmm. but you want to hear what they have to say and then you can really mm -hmm. 
you know, bring that within your brand. Mm -hmm. um, is there, are there any brands or any commercials necessarily that you've seen that you would think was amazing, was such a great spot for whatever reason, whether it was just really mm -hmm. creative or the message or? Um, I think the last one that really moved me was the, it was the Nike commercial with uh, Serena Williams. I think the, forgot the tagline, but something like, you know, be crazy. I don't know if you remember it, but that one, I don't know, really moved me. Um, I didn't cry, but I was like, I was close to, and then we, we watched it together in a team meeting. Um, that one was very, I know, inspiring. And it was like a different way to showcase, you know, women empowerment, um, because it's been kind of, you know, done and again and again. And I think that was really like a fresh take and, I don't know, very emotional, um, from my perspective. But it sounds like, and then the fact that it was different, you know, because we, mm -hmm. even when, COVID was first starting. We saw a lot of the same ads, you know, yes. and as mm -hmm. people getting out of COVID, then we saw a lot of similar ads. So mm -hmm. we, and you see where they come up. It, they may be original at that time, but then it sort of, mm -hmm. you know, everyone sort of throws it out there at the same time. Mm -hmm. But when you see something that maybe it's the same message, but just done in a different way, mm -hmm. um, it's obviously mm -hmm. that makes a difference. So um, t I'm curious in terms of, is there something that you do maybe every day or whatever that makes you, you feel like it's just, you need to do it. It really invigorates you for the day. It makes you a better leader or just better mm -hmm. in your life, a better mom. Is there something mm -hmm. you need to do? Um, I think one of my, I don't know, one thing that I feel always work is really listen to people, um, you know, whether it's at work, at home, I think really listening, showing empathy, uh, you know, trying to identify yourself to, to the person you're speaking to so that you can, you know, provide help or support. I think that's something that has really been great for me. Um, it's, it made things so much easier to, to really, you know, listen to what people have to say and not rush conversations. So I think that's probably my, my little secret. <laughs> <laughs> How about your guilty pleasure? Do you have a guilty pleasure in the day or week or whatever, whenever you could time for it? So um, I, have a, um, I have a food blog with my husband. So he's a really great cook. And, um, and usually, well, when we had the time, now it's, it's been a bit slow uh, with baby number two, but um, we used to, I used to photograph the dishes and you know we post it on the on the blog, and then we eat the you know the dishes. So uh, that's been kind of like yeah our guilty pleasure during the weekend. That's great. What what kind of foods do you tend to cook, or your husband tend to cook? So he cooks. Um, he's from India, but he likes to do more like kind of fusion. So mixing a bit, um, yeah, Western cuisine techniques with um, Indian spices and flavors. So it's it's really interesting. Oh, very cool. Now, do you, when, after you taste them, do you post your thoughts about them? I mean, is every dish, um, you know, thumbs up or every once in a while is there, well, we could do this a little differently. Um, <laughs> no, we also post the fails. Um, so I don't know, we, we got like a pizza oven and we burned the first pizza. So, <laughs> you know, we, it's also fun to, you know, to post the fails. That's great. Well, so then, I mean, and this might be the answer to it, but if you mm -hmm. had to have a plan B, you couldn't do be CMO anymore you couldn't do anything in marketing mm -hmm. what would that plan B be yeah I think probably I I think I would be a food photographer and critic oh and critic too mm -hmm. so, <laughs> I don't know if I would you know be able to but I would love to what what would be your I mean you talked about a little bit what you guys your husband mm -hmm. cooks. what are your favorite foods to go what would you want to see um yeah I, I really love any ethnic food so you know Indian uh, Pakistani, um, Filipino, really, I don't know, anything that is, you know, not French because I'm just, I'm used to it. I mean, I love French food, but I like sometimes to, you know, get a little bit of different tastes and, and cultures. Very cool. Well, I think this has been really great. Thank you so much, um, Chloe. I really appreciate you doing this. And actually we have, Ron John is coming the end mm -hmm. of this month um, to our D2C Summit. So we're gonna have you guys there as well. So that will be really fun. <laughs> And uh, hopefully we'll get you at one of these too, but uh, I'm just so glad that I was able to get to meet you and talk with you and, and just really enjoy mm -hmm. that you're very, uh, very pleasurable, very delightful to talk to.
Thanks, Lisa. Yeah, thank you for having me again. Oh, you're welcome. And I want to thank everyone for coming or watching, not coming. And um, of course, we do this every week and just uh, keep checking us out. And if you have someone you want me to pull back the curtains on, just let me know and I'll do my best. So thank you.